one piano. Here we are. On piano. It's, it's high f f f technology is on off switches and everything. It's, what do you expect to keep up with these days? On piano, a rare appearance, and we are so happy to see him. My, the man behind the mask is the one and only Jeff Helmer. And styling his haircut from 2020. Wonder. On the bass, John Frimgen. <laughs> On the drums, the first and the founder of the Austin Jazz Society and the first president, uh, very pleased to have back with us Steve Summer. Steve Summer, the drummer. One of my best buddies since college, if not my best buddy. Uh, I owe everything to him in terms of uh, music. And uh, I helped a little bit with the logistics, like the on and off switch of the microphone. This is Dr. John Mills. I'm Michael Mordecai. This is a trombone. And I believe that Colin was going to come up now and uh, thank our sponsors. Come up, Colin. Thank you, Mike. Check, check. Okay, this is working. I hope you guys can hear it out there. I'm not listening to the mix right now. But one more time for the Austin Jazz Society. And um, my name is Colin. This is Monks. Uh, for several, you know, about three and a half years, we were doing all these pop-up shows around Austin, and I was doing some streams from my living room uh, in May, I guess, of the pandemic when all the gigs were gone, and uh, Tom from the Austin Jazz Society reached out and asked if we could start some streams back up with Monks uh, to help support the Project Safety Net. And with their support every single Tuesday night and a few other things, I was able to rent my first studio around the corner and now have blossomed into this place where we got 15 shows. So I want to thank the Austin Jazz Society for giving me a platform to build such a cool venue in here. Please give a shout out. Um, and I guess this is episode 51 or 52 of these live streams. We did take a break as things were opening up. But we started out the series again, and uh, the Project Safety Net put uh, money in so many musicians' pockets that were out of work here in Austin, as well as some grants for people's uh, health you know, bills and all kinds of different things. And to date, uh, the Project Safety Net and you guys out there on the internet and in this room have raised over $147,000 that would have not made it into the pockets of jazz musicians. And uh, this is the final concert of Project Safety Net. So, you know, we're at 147. Maybe we can get over 150,000 if anybody's feeling generous out there, you know, uh, help us out. But if you're tuning in online, uh, please donate to support this band and our venue. Uh, if you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, uh, you can be recognized as a sponsor for this final stream. I think we'll be listing it on the website, but I would just like to thank the sponsors for tonight's concert. We have uh, Arch Klimpner, Clay Robinson, Linda Ball, uh, Tom and Barbara Van Tassel, Kevin Hart, Catherine Old Mixon, and of course the Austin Jazz Society. Uh, thank you guys so much for being with us here tonight and for your sponsorships. And, uh, you know, please, if you're tuning in online, feel free to clap along with these fine people in here. There is a comment section, so you can use these. Uh, Things called emojis, clap along. Please share this video. Please tune in for more Monks Jazz live streams. We have a bunch of great holiday shows coming up and all that. But tune in for a wonderful concert. Um, this is also a very special occasion. We're inducting three, um, you know, pivotal and you know, uh, amazing, legendary jazz musicians into the Austin Jazz Society Hall of Fame. So, you know, tune in, sit back, and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you, guys.
We'd like him to welcome to the stage right now, Rabbi Neil Plumoff. Thanks, Mike, and uh, really a beautiful set so far from our friends, and if you can give it up for uh, Steve Summer on drums. John Fremgen on bass. Jeff Helmer on piano. John Mills on saxophone. And Mike Mordecai on all things trombone. And we'd really like to thank you to the Austin Jazz Society, to Tom and, and everyone for your foresight, for your vision, and for your ability to bring us together even in difficult times. And how many of you haven't seen each other in a little bit? So it's a really, it's an effervescent time for us to not take ourselves uh, for, uh, for granted and to realize the fragility of our lives. And I just wanted to also uh, give some great gratitude to Colin Shook and to Monks Jazz for keeping us all together. Now, in a moment, we're going we're gonna to really uh, pay homage and celebrate uh, three wonderful souls who are going to be inducted into the uh, Hall of Fame for the Austin Jazz Society. But I was thinking about monks, and I, I think I got this wrong, because we're over here, and I was expecting more of like a monastery. Because I don't know if you guys have heard this, but you know there was a, there was a monastery back in the day, and, uh, and it was just run by some amazing, amazing uh, wizened... Uh, seasoned uh, souls, teachers who really were very responsible for the education of generations. And one day the students couldn't find their master in the monastery and they were looking all over for him. And uh, they were going floor by floor and they went all the way down the stairs to the basement, to the sub-basement, to the sub-basement where the rarest of books were. The rarest of books and they found ultimately after this big search, they found the master over the oldest book they had, it was open on the table, and there he was crying. And they were just, they didn't know what to do, and they said, Master, Master, what's, what's going on? What, why are you crying in the monastery? You're the best monk, you know, what, what's going on? And he, it's through his tears, he looks up, and he looks at this the oldest manuscript, and he says, look here, it says, celebrate, not celibate. <laughs> So that's what we're going to try to do here. <laughs> as, uh, as Gertrude Stein wrote, a silent gratitude isn't much use to anyone. So we are going to offer our tremendous appreciation for uh, beautiful people who have lit up our world, who have uh, shown in our galaxy. And I just, no suspense, if you don't mind, it's going to be in just a moment, it's going to be Mitch Watkins, John Blondell, and of loving, loving memory, Scott Lanningham. So I'm going to, Mitch, I'm going to offer a couple of words about you and sort of your background, and maybe we can have a chat about what you're thinking about, about the celebrate Celebrating part, not the celibate part. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, one of the, the great uh, soul meisters is, was born in McAllen, Texas. Right here. Really? Just like two people? Come on, y'all. Uh, Mitch Watkins. McAllen, Texas. And uh, he was taking piano lessons when he was a kid. And uh, I hear tell that you actually got a voice scholarship to TCU. Is that true? All right, so we're going to do a set later with you singing. Is that right? Yeah. You never close your eyes. No, come on. So it's going to be great. I, that, I wish I'd known that in the Views and Brews. We would have done something about it. So uh, you got your first guitar, I think, age 12 or 13, and you started playing surf guitar. That's something. That's going to be something. So jazz and the art of surfing. Exactly. So we're going to get to that. And, uh, you know, that kind of took you up, and, uh, and you were just really inspired by the music of your age. I had to look these guys up. This is uh, I don't, the Beatles and uh, the Rolling Stones. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. <laughs> Jimi Hendrix, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page. And, uh, you know, it's actually very interesting. Just, I watched again just the other night uh, the, the uh, 
uh, Kennedy Awards when they were uh, when Hart played uh, Stairway to Heaven, uh, and and Jimmy Page and Robert Plant and and uh, and uh, uh, others were up, and and just the faces that they were making of just appreciating the mastery of what they've created and what they've let go of, and. It was just a really, I don't cry much, but it would just really brought, I did, I cried a lot, so it really <laughs> brought a lot to me. And then, you know, you're, uh, you're listening to other things and, and emula emulating styles, and uh, then you had a composition teacher named Glenn Down, is that correct, at the University of Texas? And yeah, so you probably knew who that guy was, right? Oh, yeah. All right, so, and uh, you know, they didn't really have a guitar program at UT, so they had a, a lot of piano, and you'd check out the, uh, the changes, the chord changes on the piano, and then you'd bring it back the next day with the chord changes on the guitar. And, uh, and uh, Professor Down was like, man, that's impossible. And you kind of single-handedly brought forward a, a guitar program at the University of Texas. And you were named the first ever jazz guitar instructor at the University of Texas in Austin. Hook em. So that's pretty good. So, and you continue to do a lot of good things, and you were uh, with other beloved uh, folks in Austin. You were part of a band called Passenger. Yeah. You know about that. And uh, I know that there's a story, and Roscoe's told me too, but you know, you uh, found your way, and Leonard Cohen found you, and you started doing some touring with uh, Mr. LC himself, and uh, that just expanded horizons as well. And I know you had mentioned that you have a particular memory of, uh, of being on an ensemble and you know having everybody out in the audience kind of grooving to what y'all are doing, but really looking on the stage and looking at the musicians and seeing the sort of the nods on the bandstand. And as you write, you can tell that tonight the magic happened. And that kind of ensemble playing, that kind of silent acknowledgement, that kind of appreciation of the moment is, uh, is really, uh, I think, an important aspect of making music. You have six CDs to your name, or six projects to your name, and you're also a, a, a fine record producer, producing records for uh, Abram Moore, Tina Lear, Bob Meyer, and Jerry Jeff Walker. So that's pretty great. And uh, I don't know, you, this might work out. I think you've got another CD with a fine woman named Diane Donovan. I hope that works out for you. It's really, <laughs> that's his wife, you know, come on, that, that's, that's fun. The, uh, and uh, congratulations, they, you're called the Alto Rays. That's really, it's better than the X-Rays, I guess, it's better. So the Alto Rays, and it's Back to the Light, which I appreciate, and it's a, you call it a Cosmic Chill Jazz, which I like, so that's a, that's a whole new genre. Uh, you're described by the Jazz Times as a man for all musical seasons. And in Texas, we only have like two seasons, but uh, you know. That's, <laughs> But, uh, but I want, before uh, offering the award, before offering the award, I just wanted to quote a, a fragment of a poem because it reminded me of you. It's, uh, it's by a guy named David Graham. And the poem is called Kinds of Jazz. And it was written in 1987. And we're just so proud to be able to share this with you, Mitch. And to you and to Diane and to your family and to your precious ones, may you continue to have beautiful good health, inspiration, and lots and lots of occasions to celebrate and to laugh and to have joy. So this is the, uh, this is the section of the, of the poem, Kinds of Jazz, that reminded me of you. And it says this. One night, I heard a blues guitar so fine, it was like a dentist's drill, full of love. <laughs> yeah. A conversation between one scripture and the next. I take that night's improvisation as fact. Scat sung well, replenishes thin voices. I love how a phrase left hanging by the trumpet would be gathered in his hands and strung like a spider web in the light. Mitch Watkins, everybody. So I know that there's a, a story, but before we get to the award, Mitch, do you, well, let's do, do what you do. Well, all I'm doing is standing here looking. I'm Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Austin Jazz Society, 
On behalf of the Austin Jazz Society, Mitch, this certificate is for you, for your distinguished service to the jazz community. You are now a member of the Austin Jazz Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for this this honor. Uh, I was thinking earlier about this, and I'm thinking what I should really get the award for is for being almost 70 years old and not having to get a job yet. Uh, and uh, some of you guys that are, some of you people that are here, uh, I've known since 1971, 72, 73, I, I moved to Austin in 71, and most of you guys didn't let me sit in with you till about 74. So, so <laughs> but uh, so much support in this community for each other, and uh, Tomas and Beto and, and Mike, and, and uh, I'm gonna leave some people out because I, I went John Blondell, of course, uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful uh, community here, and I'm so honored to be a part of it. And I would like to uh, give a quick shout out to my 91-year-old uh, mother, who's still with us and in great health and is watching. And hi, Mom. <laughs> and my lovely and so supportive wife, uh, Diane Donovan, who is here with us tonight. And shout, shout out to, to Diane's family in uh, Eastern Canada. And uh, we hope we get to cross the border uh, in Christmas time to go visit them. And um, thank you so much for, for, for this. It, it, it really means the world to me. Thanks. Well, uh, Mitch, we're, uh, we're proud of you and we appreciate you. I don't know why you're picking up the guitar. They told me you were going to sing. <laughs> so I know. <laughs> so we're sitting in and we're just so happy and, and delighted to hear your music and with continued vitality and strength. Check, check, check. In the spirit of true jazz improvisation, I threw this tune at these guys tonight, and they'd never seen it before. So it's a tune of mine called Never. Thank you. 
can't yell so much. We're going to play a tune um, that our dear friend, who we're going to talk much more about later, Scott Lanningham, used to love to sing, and boy, we used to love to hear him sing it. Um, I'm going to have to suffice to play it on the melody myself, but so you're not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing it. It wouldn't touch the way Scott sang it, no. but. Um, more on Scott later. This is called Lulu's Back in Town. I believe John Mills is going to join us on this. Come on up.
Yo, that's Hall of Famer, Mitch Watkins, everybody. <laughs> Jeff Helmer on piano. John Fremgen on the bass. Steve Summer on the drums. And John Mills on the flute. So we're going to have a conversation with uh, our friend John Blondell in just a second. But I, I don't know, do you all know where John Blondell is from? You got a one in 50 chance. That's for sure. Y'all, he's from Iowa. Give it up. And you may know him as a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, you know, I don't know, trombone, saxophone, French horn, upright bass, electric bass, penny whistle, kazoo. Everything <laughs> but, uh, and he's been on a lot of stuff. He's been on a lot of albums, and uh, that itself is like a Hall of Fame roster in itself. But uh, he went to school, high school. I don't know if you knew him, Mitch, down there in the valley, but he was in Harlingen, which is pretty great. Uh, and I can relate to this, but you know, besides all of his multiple instruments and all that stuff, I'm excited to be here with him because, I don't know about you, but this is true. He uh, turned down a full scholarship to MIT to uh, pursue the priesthood at St. Mary's University in San Antonio. So, well, well, here's a, I, I don't know about you, but I was thinking that it would be all right if we just had like a little bit of a theological discussion. Would that be all right? I don't know if that's all right. I don't know if people are starting to click on or off at this point. But, uh, we're and, uh, but here's something, John, this is interesting. You said, and I, you know, as a theologian myself, you, know, you said that your life took a turn while at a shopping mall. You were, it's about 4.30 in the afternoon, you said, and I, you heard... All the things you are played by Super Sax, S A X, right? It's a Charlie Parker tribute band. Everyone had one of those. Come on, and that was in a record store. And you befriended the proprietor of the record store, and you began to receive promo records of uh, of lots of lots of different uh, of things. And for you, it flipped a switch. Something that God could never do, obviously. But you know, we're doing doing our best here. <laughs> I'm just just joking. No, I'm not. I'm just, I'm not. You know, so eventually after St. Mary's, I don't know if, uh, did they, did you, you just left or did they ask you to leave or what? what? I, oh. <laughs> I hired after I left, after I dropped out, they hired me. And you made your way to uh, Austin, Texas, and you became the house bass player at Antones. Uh, and you played with uh, lots of great folks, including Buddy Guy, Jimmy Page, U2, Carlos Santana, Jimmy Vaughn, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Kim Wilson, Pine Top Perkins, Lou Ann Barton, Marsha Ball, Charlie Saxton, sorry, Charlie Sexton, and the Austin Blues family, among many others. So you were kind of doing that, and uh, we're playing with some other really amazing folks, both in the, uh, in the jazz world and in the uh, rock and roll world, the country music world. You've been a lot of different places. And uh, I, I saw this, so I was, this was on repeat for me this afternoon, the, uh, the Wrong Way by Sublime, and I, I just had that on. You're the uh, trombone solo in there, which is considered to be one of the truly finest trombone solos uh, of, of modern history. So, no, it's for real. So that's, uh, that's really great. So, uh, as we say, may all go well and also with you. So that's a, that's a church thing. Forget it. It's a thing. So, but I really, I kind of want to have a, <laughs> I want to have a theological thing, but maybe after our, this is a three drink minimum tonight, Colin. Is that what we're doing here? Now that we can agree on, for sure. But, uh, but, but uh, with, all, with all seriousness, uh, Lionel Hampton said this about gratitude. He said, gratitude happens when memory that is stored in the heart, not in the mind. So I think uh, to talk about the ineffable, to talk about that which moves us, which that which gives us purpose, you certainly in your uh, distinguished career have given us all that and a lot more. So friends, John Blundell.
things to say, Rabbi. <laughs> well, if we're... If we're let, <laughs> now, hold on, for real, John. How long were you at St. Mary's, for real? Oh, I would, I, I would St. Mary's for... Use the mic. Three, four years. Okay, okay. okay. That's right. Watch. I went... I went to St. Mary's for three, four years, and then, I, and then I dropped out, and then they hired me to teach. Then I ran a jazz program for a number of years. At St. Mary's? Yeah, at St. Mary's. They had a jazz program. I wish I'd kept that gig because, boy, you got to have three doctors to get a jazz gig now in a college. <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, and you just probably just transferred those thoughts about... Uh, purpose in life and what and into the music, don't you? Well, it's for real. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was supposed to. I think God put me in the seminary to study, uh, to get me away from where I was at and get me, to, uh, it's the only way I can see it. Uh, the, the, there's so many happenstances in my life and things that happen uh, that it's like, oh, it was definitely meant to be away from where I was at and where I became to, to be music. Well, John, so many of us for so many years have really enjoyed your music, your artistry, and from the bottom of our hearts, we bless you with good health and much joy and continued inspiration as we walk our paths together. Thank you. I, I want to thank you to the Jazz Society and to Paul and Tom and Michael and all the people. To the, the, all the, all the little people that got me there. <laughs> well, I'm big, so you know. Uh, I want to say, I'd like to say a few things. I've lived in Austin for quite a few years now. So a little bitty baby, yeah, right. I used to come up from San Antonio. I'd sit in with Mitch, with Passenger. Sit in with the guy. and it was, it was so much cooler up here than San Antonio. Just so much, so much cooler. And, and um, I was real fortunate in that. And Scott, I'm getting, inducted, getting indicted with uh, this crew, with Mitch and Scott. I could, I'm, I'm way, way honored. Um, Scott, you know, I've stayed with, played with Mitch, played with Passenger a few times, wonderful. Steve, uh, Steve Vetter is a drummer. Steve was playing me in my band, and, and I used, uh, he couldn't make it, so he said Scott to a gig. And Scott Lanahan started playing with me. And uh, I got Scott some real good gigs, and Mitch got us some good gigs. We all, we all did. Scott was just, you know, just fantastic. Scott's being gone is, is the wrongest thing that I know that I've ever experienced in my life. But we all love him. I miss him like crazy. He's like a little brother. He was, Mitch has gone through hell. He had a dog bite one time. The dog lived. But, man, almost, you know, we've all had our issues. Scott, when he went to started school, Music school, they wouldn't let him in. They said, oh, you can't play. North Texas State, no, we won't take you. You can't do something else with your life. You wouldn't, that's the truth. That's the honest truth. Do you know that? Yeah, it's just, that's just incredible. You know, so I, I, so these guys, all you, these gentlemen that you see up here, well, gentlemen, these guys that you see up here <laughs> playing, I, I tell you, I'm really sick, honored to death to be know with these guys, because this is the cream of the crop. These guys are the best around. There's a, there's a few others, but these guys are the best around here in this part of the country, and as good as anyone in, in the country or the world. And I, to be lumped in with, to get to play with these guys and be part of these guys is really a blessing in my life, and it, it is fantastic. I, this is my family. I grew up, I've never really had a family. I'm doing, I'm doing some of my cousins, my sister, and my, my cousin J.D., and, 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 and People that I knew when I was a kid, I'm getting reacquainted with them. And there's a bunch of cousins listening to this right now in the Midwest, which is that I hope to meet soon. But you guys might be my family. And I love all of you. Even, yeah. even Fremgen. Where is he? <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to play a song. My dear friend, Dr. Jim Rose, is going to come up and help me with this song. He's going to help me both these songs. Come on, Jim. Come on up here. He's going to play a song called Flowers on the Wall. But just to be before, as Jim's getting up here, I do want to present you, John, with this, uh, the plaque that makes you, you officially. Notary, sir? Are you a server? I, I, I'm a notary. I'm a notary, yes. Yes, it's a, it's a summons. No, it's, that's the Austin Jazz Society. John, it's an honor for me to present that to you. Long time friend. You brought me a lot of good times and wonderful musical experiences for years and years and years, and I thank you for that.
Can you show me where G is on this thing? I'll watch it. So put the strap on. Oh, okay. Thank you. I get it. I got it. I got that. No. No. Not it's a little tight there. Okay. Yeah, you can do anything. Make sure it sounds good. I, you know, you want a lot out of me. I'm really scared right now, so just tell me what you want. Okay. I need a G. If I if I that's right, that's a G in tune. Give me another one. <laughs> So uh -oh. I won't try to make it short. Uh -oh. So the first gig with Bondell, no. 1995. No. You don't want to hear this story? <laughs> I was the new guy in town. And, you know, I have the, the honor of also being a bass player. And, you know, we're, John's a bass player. But he was playing trombone on this gig. And um, so I got hired to play the stuff for Glenn Schutz at Cedar Street. And we played the gig, and you know, John decided he was going to put me through my paces because I was the you know the new young guy in town, and he was going to show me what's what. Yeah. So we played the gig, and <laughs> and he shorted me twenty dollars on the gig. He, he paid me eighty bucks, and the gig paid a hundred. And I and and I said to him, "Hey man, Glenn told me the gig paid a hundred bucks," and he, John said to me, "You go home and practice. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'll pay you a hundred dollars." So, well, stop, stop. Hang on, this gets good, don't worry. So, so I was pissed, and I held it, and I was young, and I was cocky, and I held a grudge, and I, and I wouldn't, I told Mike, I'm like, I'm happy to play any gig you want to give me, just don't, be put, don't put me on a gig with that guy Blundell, I, you know. So we didn't cross paths for like two and a half years. I was really mad, and kind of forgot about it, and I was a house bass player at the Elephant Room Jam Session, and one night he, he comes sauntering in with his trombone, and and there's no other bass players, and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta play with this guy. So John comes, pulls his horn out, and Mike's running the session, and he starts, you know, playing his killer, you know, bebop trombone solo. I was like, holy man, he's forgot, he's really, really good, and you know, I'm, maybe I'm still not, I'm still mad at him, but you know, we we played a few tunes, and and then another bass player came to sit in, and then I was chatting with Mike at the bar, and and John came walking up and you know the typical john with his drink he's like, oh mike who's this bass player where do you come from where have you been hiding this guy from me you know he's he's great he's great man where, where do you come from and and mike says um john this is john fremgen you you he played with you two years ago at cedar street and you shorted him 20 bucks and told him to go home and practice <laughs> and then it was just silence for like five seconds and he goes well see it worked <laughs> <laughs> and uh that's exactly what happened. And I've had the dubious honor of being pretty much his main bass player ever since because I kind of, I, in that moment, I understood John Blondell, and, which scares me that I, that I can say that, but it's true. <laughs> I'll give you 20 tonight. <laughs> he still owes me 20 bucks. You can play uh, Flowers on the Wall. I'm gonna, just like we do. Okay. I'll, I'll start it. All right. You got to One, two. Thank you. 
Y'all, that's uh, Jim Rose on trumpet. <laughs> Jeff Helmer on piano. Steve Summer on drums. But I don't know if you know, but you got you two Hall of Famers. You got John Blondell there on the bass. And Mitch Watkins on the guitar. So uh, it's lovely to be here, and we'd like to thank our friends at the Austin Jazz Society for crafting such a beautiful evening. And Colin Shook and the good people at Monk's Jazz for making it happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to honor a dear friend in the memory of a dear friend, Scott Laningham. Scott was a good friend. Before anything that we would do at Views and Brews or Cactus Cafe, and even if we weren't doing things, we would text and we would talk about life. And there was an unspoken bond, kind of the magic, Mitch, that you talked about before, just knowing that things were connected, even though you didn't have to talk about it. And I ran across, I've been thinking about gratitude. And in my day job, I, uh, I, I help a lot of people, and I hold space for a lot of people in pain. And very often when, I, when I'm in a house of mourning, 
people will sort of look at each other and the unspoken thing after we are recognizing that we're holding space for the one that, we're, that we've loved and who is no longer is the unspoken thought is who's next among us. And I ran across this beautiful quote about gratitude by Sophocles. And I think it's, if you'll permit me, he wrote, gratitude to gratitude always gives birth. And I'm thinking about that. And I was look, thinking about that, thinking about Scott. And Langston Hughes in 1956 had a conversation that it was later called Jazz is Communication. And he wrote this, Langston Hughes. He said, now to wind it all up with you, each of us in the middle, jazz is only what you yourself got out of it. Louis Armstrong's famous quote, or misquote probably, lady, if you have to ask what it is, you'll never know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be so positive. The lady just might know without being able to let loose the cry, to follow through, to light up before the fuse blows out. To me, jazz is a montage of a dream deferred, a great big dream yet to come and always yet to become ultimately and finally true. He goes on, maybe in the next seminar for Saturday, Nat Hentoff and Billy Strayhorn and Tony Scott and the others on that panel will tell us about it. When they take up the future of jazz, the bird was looking for that future like mad. The newborns, Chico, Dave, Gulda, Milt, Charlie Mingus. That future is what you call pregnant. Potential papas and mamas of tomorrow's jazz are all known. But the papa and the mama, maybe both are anonymous. But the child will communicate. Jazz is a heartbeat. Its heartbeat is yours. You will tell me about its perspectives when you get ready. The book of Proverbs says, how do we know that we're successful in life? Well, it's not what we do, it's not what our children do, but it's rather what our, great, what our grandchildren do. Scott Lanningham, of blessed memory, grew up in Amarillo. He came to Austin around 1980. I guess that was just a little bit after Mitch was able to play with some of the big cats in town at that point. He attended the University of Texas, earning a degree in radio, television, and film. He moved to New York, and Mitch joined him there in 1984, and they began to play in a group uh, at the jazz club called Michael's, is that right? Mikkel. Oh, sorry, it's French. <laughs> Michael's. <laughs> and Scott and Mitch would play together over 40 years. And then following Scott's time in New York City, he relocated to Boston where he worked for Christian Science Monitor Radio and met his beautiful and wonderful wife, Elizabeth. And over the next two decades, you'll notice why I brought the Sophocles quote and the Langston Hughes quote, together they had eight children together. Uh, eight. Okay, just one for every night of Hanukkah. And then, uh, and then they came to Austin, where uh, Scott started working for IBM. And he uh, was pulled in many directions with family, with work, and playing drums. And uh, playing at the Elephant Room, and uh, playing church on Monday with his dear colleague and friend, Elias Haslinger. Being part of the uh, in, in, in that indelible fabric of the Austin music community. Uh, Alexandro Escovedo, and began to tour. And John Fremgen, where'd he go? He told a story, in, oh, there he is over there. John introduced Scott to Christopher Cross, who brought Scott into his touring band and uh, formed a local jazz supergroup called uh, Fredonia. And Scott started playing drums for that and wrote the title track, the 2019 album Firefly. 
And uh, those of you who attended the celebration of life back in May know that uh, Scott was big on band camp and, uh, and offered a couple of songs uh, just before he passed away this past 8th of May. He, uh, he offered a song called Holy Ground, which was an instrumentalist featuring uh, Mitch and uh, Gene Elders, who played with George Strait, as well as a, a song called Carry On, where he plays everything and sings everything. And while we know Holy Ground was inspired by what was going on with protests following uh, the death of George Floyd, and Carry On was inspired by the arrival of his grandchild in 2020. You can't help but think that that's kind of how we're thinking about things anyway. This is holy ground tonight in every day, and we just, just, we're just passing through and just to carry on as well. Scott spent really beautiful quality time with his family on camping trips and gardening and playing in the yard as well. And I really had a simpatico relationship with him, and I know many of us did, as he sought to live many lifetimes in a moment. He was in a hurry. He was loving. He was gentle. And he was fiercely, fiercely talented. And he is every day sorely missed. So to his family, to his children, to his, gran to his grandchildren, and especially to you, Elizabeth, may you feel held and feel loved not just by listening to what he has offered in his beautiful short life, but also, too, in what he has yet to offer. For I do believe that not just the eight kids, but there were all his students, there were all his children, learning the beautiful lessons, learning the beautiful love that he just modeled. So if you're able, or if somebody from the family would like to come up and receive the award on his behalf of being inducted into the Hall of Fame of the Austin Jazz Society, we love him, and we love you, and we love your family very, very much. May his memory be a blessing. <laughs> on, behalf of, on behalf of the Austin Jazz Society, and on behalf of everybody in this room, Congratulations to Scott Lanningham for being inducted into the Austin Jazz Hall of Fame.
someone who wanted to come and be with us tonight. And uh, Robert, come to the stage. Uh, Scott was in so many bands, so many uh, places we played all together. But uh, one thing we can uh, say is with Beto and the Fairlanes, everybody on stage here tonight, except for Dr. Rose, he's too young. <laughs> Mitch Watkins, I think he produced a couple of our records. Uh, John Mills, an original member, I'm an original member. Steve Summer, a member of Beto and the Fairlanes, uh, who uh, filled in after Scott moved to New York, I believe. Yeah, I think it was Mambo and then Scott, and then it was uh, Steve. And uh, John Blondell has played not only bass, but also trombone with Beto and the Fairlanes. Robert, we're so ha honored that you could be with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scott was uh, an inspiration to us all. He was kind and gentle and a tremendous musician. But he was also other things. He, he wrote, he was an author, and he wrote a book called Lounge. And, and the, what it is is a list of gigs from hell. Uh, <laughs> we wrote a song called uh, Pink Flamingo. Pink Flamingo. Wading through the mud. She's the first of God's creatures to anticipate the flood. <laughs> Highfalutin, lowfalutin, she flies so gracefully. She's the Mercedes Benz of the Heron family. <laughs> so, uh, of all the things that Scott is, or was, uh, he, he was hilarious. He had a terrific capacity to make people laugh. So, uh, those gigs from hell, we've all had them, right? Playing a trio in the rain, and Blondell was holding an umbrella and, and playing bass at the same time, which he, which he can do, right? Um, and lightning hits the umbrella. And, and John's hand just, and the cli client comes out and says, you guys can keep playing, right? <laughs> sure. And, and then there's the time when Scott forgot his snare stand. And he played the gig with his snare wedged between his knees. <laughs> Needless to say, Scott was in agony for quite a while. <laughs> but I'm very privileged to be now a part of the community here after 40 years. Uh, about, about got it down but not quite. <laughs> okay, this is for you, Scott.
Congratulations to Mitch Watkins. Congratulations to John Blondell. We love Scott and all you guys, all nine of you. We want to thank Rabbi Neal. You want to close out and say something? Thanks, everyone. And thank you, Mike Mordecai and uh, the wonderful ensemble that is uh, here. And we'd like to thank again our friends at Austin Jazz Society and at Monk's Jazz as well. And uh, may we cherish each day that we have. May we celebrate all that we have. And may we be blessed in our journeys and appreciate the good health that we have day by day. And may we gather for the ensemble play and so magic can happen. Thank you, everyone.